Hi, this is Steve KBZ, and I'm going to do a video here. I'm going to try to keep it short uh, on a new mode available in the WSJT collection of modes. Uh, this one is called, let me get it right, FT8. Now, if you use JT65, you will love FT8. FT8 is a very fast mode as compared to JT65. Uh, the transmission and reception intervals are 15 seconds. So we have this mode running right now. You can interface it with your uh, uh, rig. Uh, if you have cat control for your rig, you can interface it with your rig so you can select frequencies from the pick list that's specific by mode. And whenever you select a frequency, we're going to go to 20 meters, it'll automatically set your radio on that frequency. The band activity window is here. These are the signals that are on the band and they are highlighted colors. We'll pop up the F2 settings menu and we can look at colors to see what they mean. Uh, if a message is highlighted green, it means it contains CQ in the message. If it's highlighted red, it means your call sign is in the message. Uh, your transmitted messages are always yellow. If it's a new DXCC entity, it's violet. And if it's a new call sign that you haven't worked in that band and mode, then it's pink. So if, if it's, see, that's uh, KJ7S is calling CQ. That's highlighted green. That means I already have him logged on that band and mode. So the pink ones I haven't worked. If we get one that's violet, that means it's a new DXCC entity. Now if I double click on any of these that are calling CQ, it will automatically put me in transmit mode and automatically start transmitting the appropriate message for a CQ response. So I'm going to double click this guy real quick. Over here in the receive transmit frequency window is you have his message and right now I'm transmitting this to that station. I'm calling him basically. I'm sending his call sign, my call sign, and my grid square. Now this is the status bar for each transmission and reception interval. Uh, this only lasts 15 seconds. If he responds to me, it will automatically send my response, and he did there. This is his transmission, it's my call sign, his call sign, and my signal report minus 11, and the program automatically is sending back to him, without me doing anything, uh, his signal report. Now it's receiving again, and we'll see if he received that. He should send me three R's, and then if I receive the three R's, I should send him seven three, and the program will do that if, in fact, I receive the correct response. There, received the three R's. The program's automatically sending seven three. We've completed this contact. It automatically brings up the logging window to log the program. I'll click OK. It logged it, and there we have it. One complete two-way valid contact in uh, FT8 mode. And uh, let's, let's look for another. This guy's calling CQDX, so we'll pass on him. There's one KG5THG. That's pink, so that should be a new one. It's automatically transmitting to that station now. You can look up here on the waterfall and see where it's at. The green and red bars. Green is uh, reception, location in the waterfall display. Red is transmission, location in the waterfall display, and you can work split with this mode. Split, transmit, and receive. So we'll see if he's going to respond to my call. If he responds to someone else, we want to stop the transmission so we don't interfere with his QSO with a different station. So he's transmitting now. Here's the status bar. And we'll see if he responds to me or someone else or nobody at all. Uh, nothing so far. We'll go through another cycle here and see what happens. And there's actually nothing here in the waterfall, so there won't be anything going on there. Yeah, I'll try transmitting to him one more time. If we don't, now we'll watch the waterfall. In the last, uh, his last transmission cycle, there was no transmission there. And it doesn't look like there's any transmission here. So I'm, I'm going to halt this. And we'll try. So, oop, there, he, there he comes. 
Maybe maybe he just responded late here. We'll see. Yep, he did. So if I double click on that, it's automatically going to take me right into his the proper response to his transmission to me. He gave me a plus 5 dB. I'm giving him a plus 0 dB signal report. And I'm in the reception part of the cycle. He sent me the three R's, so I am transmitting the 73 to end the contact. The program automatically brings up the logging window. It will automatically fill it with the correct signal reports, frequency, call signs, dates, times, etc. So that ends the contact. I'm going to turn off the transmission and we can just monitor what's going on on the frequency. If, I, if you click once on this erase tab, it erases the receive frequency window. If you double click, it'll clear both. So this was the next transmission cycle. You'll see how fast these go by at 15 seconds. Uh, now, uh, we're, we want to go over how we save these to Logbook of the World. Uh, there's no option to do that automatically in the WSJTX program. So we need to do that through the other means that are available. Now that we've made some new contacts using WSJTX in uh, FT8 mode, I want to do a couple of things. I want to import them into my everyday log. Uh, I make sure that all of my logs that I create in all applications like uh, WSJT and in N1MM and all of my contest logs and everything are all migrated into my general log program where all of my contacts are in one location where I don't have to go look through all of these various logs to find a contact to confirm a contact. So I've made a shortcut on the desktop to the WSJT log so let's open that and also at the same time I upload these to Logbook of the World. Normally, all I would have to do is import these into my everyday log, and from there I could upload them to Logbook of the World. But the problem is, Logbook of the World does not recognize FT8 as a valid mode yet. It's a brand new mode, and they don't have that in the Logbook of the World programming. Now you see this log is kind of divided in sections. Every time I do an import into my log and do an upload to Logbook of the World, I put a divider in so I don't have to find where I left off the last time. So these are the last two contacts we just made. I'm going to highlight those and I'm going to copy them. Then I'm going to close this out. Now remember that was the log created by WSJT. Now I'm going to open up another file where I can work with these. And those were the last contacts. I'm going to put these contacts in. Then I am going to do, just divide them here so they'll be a little, uh, little easier to see and work with. Okay, so I'm going to close this out and save the changes. And I'm going to open up my everyday log and we're going to import these into my everyday log. I have to wait until it loads in all of my contacts and I have over 60,000 contacts in this log at this time 60,240 so I'm going to go to file import an ADIF file from the desktop and that's the file and there they are those are the two contacts we just made that have been added. Now I'm going to go over here to Electronic Logs. I'm going to upload those to Club Log. You may or may not be familiar with Club Log. And uh, it, there's no way I could describe that in two or three minutes. Uh, it's a very, very valuable tool, especially for DXers. So it's done. So we'll click Done. In a minute, that's going to put a B in this column for set confirmation sent and received. That's going to tell me that those have, the B indicates club log. There it is. So that shows they've been uploaded to club log. Now if I tried to upload these to logbook of the world, all contacts not uploaded, 
it won't do it. It's going to say in the invalid mode, FT8 is an invalid mode on line 34. It doesn't recognize that mode. So here's how we have to deal with that. I'm going to close out my log program. We're going to go back to this file I created where I copied just the contacts that I needed. And here's the problem. FT8 is not a recognized mode by Logbook of the World. FT8 is a data mode. Whenever you upload any data mode to Logbook of the World, it can, you can upload packet logs, you can upload RIDI logs, you can upload PSK logs, JT60, whatever logs, any of the JT modes. Logbook of the World will convert those modes all to data once they're uploaded. It just considers all of them data and doesn't distinguish between them. So if we change this FT8 to data, uh, and also change this 3 in the mode description. The 3 stands for the number of characters in the mode description. So FT8 has 3 characters, data has 4. So we need to change that 3 to a 4 and change this FT8 to data. Because we only have 2 contacts, we could easily go in there and do that. But let's say this file had 100 contacts. Uh, you wouldn't want to go through and modify every single record and make all those corrections. So we're going to use the substitute tool that you will find in just about every text editor. You bring that substitute tool up usually with the control H command. Uh, that brings up the um, substitute tool. So we want to substitute mode M O D E colon 3 greater than F T Eight, which is what we want to change, and we want to change that to mode colon four greater than data. And we're going to click replace all, and you'll see that this, where it used to say mode three FT8, now says mode four data, mode four data. Now we only had two, but if we would have had a thousand, it would have made those changes in a very short period of time. Now we can close this, save the changes. Now it's in a form that Logbook of the World will accept. Now I wanted to keep the original mode description in my general log, so I'm not going to do anything with that. I'm going to use the Trusted QSL Logbook of the World tool to sign and upload a file. I won't get into all this. I did a previous video on uh, on using Logbook of the World. Uh, the file is on the desktop. The file is called Up Yours. And it should find two QSOs and upload them to Logbook of the World, and now it's done. So all we had to do was change that Mode 3 FT8 to Mode 4 Data, and we could send those to Logbook of the World. Now I'm going to go back into my general log program. We'll wait for the uh, all the contacts to load in. There they are. Now you see these are the two contacts. Uh, it's not showing that they were uploaded to Logbook of the World yet. Matter of fact, the last four contacts. But if I go to Log Logbook of the World and I can have it download everything since my last uh, activity in downloading, and it will give me any updates that Logbook of the World has processed. So far it's only processed two. I had four that it didn't show were processed yet by Logbook of the World. Now there's only two. These two are showing up. In fact, this one was already confirmed. This contact was just made to not even an hour ago yeah, uh, with AH0U. So that guy's already confirmed the contact via Logbook of the World. So it, it is it, a great idea to upload these. You can make the contacts all day, but if you don't lo upload them to Logbook of the World, you won't get awards credit for them if you want to apply for awards later on. Uh, there are lots of available awards out there if you use eQSL or if you do the uh, QRZ.com awards, and th those are fine. Nothing against those. But uh, uh, the ones that, uh, in my for my money, really carry some clout are the ARRL awards and the CQ awards and some of the some of the others, but very definitely the ARRL and CQ awards. 
So uh, that's one of the ways to get credit for those contacts to go toward those awards without uh, without spending a fortune uh, sending QSL cards worldwide. We'll see if these other two contacts have been uh, processed by Logbook of the World yet. Usually they're processed in three or four minutes. Yep, they are. They've been updated. So now it's verified here with the L that they have been processed by Logbook of the World. If we get them confirmed, there'll be an L in this column. We'll just go back in here and check this. Well, we're going to look for any confirmed since, since the last time. Okay, nope, nothing new. Uh, these are the last ones that were confirmed, but uh, those have already been uh, indicated as confirmed by Logbook of the World in, in the log file. So there you go. Uh, great mode, JT8. You can work a lot of contacts in a hurry in that mode. Uh, the other night, I think I worked 15 or 20. You can see here in this run on 40 meters in uh, from 1110 to 1143 in about 30 minutes. I worked 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, 10 contacts there in pretty short order. Same thing here on uh, 20 meters. Uh, good weak signal mode on 6 meters. Got a handful of them up here on 6 meters, 17 meters. When the band is pretty much dead for everything else, some of these weak signal modes get through uh, pretty good. So thanks for watching and uh, have fun with, uh, uh, with the new mode FT8. Uh, uh, KBZ saying 7-3.